So I think violence can never be justified for any cause, which obviously includes democracy. Hey guys, it's Key Bros. So yeah, we're actually two final year law students at London. We're both around 20 odd years old and we're born and bred in Hong Kong. So the reason why we decided to start Kibos was because we felt like Hong Kong was really in need of a civil, irrational and um, impartial voice um, because politics in Hong Kong was becoming extremely polarized um, a few months ago. And um, we also wanted to provide, provide a platform for people from different countries, different backgrounds who might hold different political views to come onto our channel and share their opinions. I think um, protesting or um, free speech are rights which are protected under the Hong Kong Basic Law. But I think um, there are two points I want to make, it, uh, make in relation to that. The first thing is there is no freedom or, any, or no rights which is um, absolute. So there are certain qualifications to the ways in which people exercise their rights. And for one, for example, if you exercise your right to free speech, you must exercise it in a way that doesn't affect other people's right to free speech. And what we saw in Hong Kong over the past few years was that the radicals and the violent protesters in Hong Kong basically intimidated those with whom they disagreed and um, forced them to submit and forced them to silence themselves. And we actually think that that is anti-democratic and that is against the values that Hong Kong people hold dear to. So I think violence can never be justified for any cause, which obviously includes democracy. So in my opinion, democracy entails that we should be able to have different and multiple voices in a society and forcing people to accept one particular ideology through violence, intimidation, as we've discussed, is inherently undemocratic. Yes, I totally agree with that. I think the problem with um, the violent radicals here in Hong Kong is that when they claim to be fighting for democracy, um, I believe when you claim to be fighting for democracy, you should be fighting for certain values. And when you're fighting for values such as civil discourse, free speech, and so on, these values shouldn't just apply to those with whom you agree. It should also apply to people with whom you disagree. Um, one fundamental concern I have with the sort of anti-Chinese or anti-mainland or anti-government sentiment um, that was um, exhibited by the protesters was that, again, if we are thinking in terms of Hong Kong's long-run interest, we must cooperate with the mainland because ultimately the central government has sovereignty over Hong Kong and has the constitutional basis to do basically whatever it wants with Hong Kong. And I think when people, um, sort of um, demonize the central government and refuse to even consider the fact that the central government may be trying to help Hong Kong, may, they may indeed have the best interest of Hong Kong people at heart and instead turn to foreign forces who probably do not have the interest of Hong Kong people at heart. So I think that is very dangerous and I also think that is um, a very unrealistic and almost a very childish way. Yeah, so speaking of the question of whether patriots should be the only um, legitimate rulers of Hong Kong, um, we think it actually de depends on how you define patriots, right? Um, so I think, again, we don't exactly, we aren't exactly privy to the central government's definition of patriots or what it means to be patriotic. But I think one fundamental um, idea that we can all agree upon is that uh, rulers or legislators or government officials of any given jurisdiction on planet Earth ought to embrace the constitution of that jurisdiction. And in Hong Kong, obviously, that um, constitution would be both the mainland um, Chinese um, constitution and the Hong Kong Basic Law. 
uh, and obviously because Article One of the Hong Kong Basic Law states that Hong Kong is an inalienable part of China, um, I think being a patriot at least entails that you should accept that Chinese sovereignty um, is in existence over Hong Kong, and Hong Kong is an inalienable part of China. And um, I think that's a, that's a rather basic requirement because if you don't even up, swear to uphold that jurisdiction's constitution, then um, in, a, in a way, are you really qualified to govern that jurisdiction? Because if you don't agree with the constitution itself, then on what basis, on what constitutional basis, are you in power, right? Where does your power come from? It comes from the basic law. So I think that's one um, basic idea that we can all agree upon.